born into a world full of wonder and amazement, we all must realize the inevitability that someday everyone will die. But what is waiting for us on the other side? Is there a proverbial life? Will all our dead relatives be there to greet us? Or do our souls float around the cosmos waiting to recognize something familiar? Some resemblance of the life now left behind. With this documentary, we hope to if not answer some of these questions. At least show evidence of something else out there. Possibly another realm of existence. Can we hear you on the other side? When I was a child, I was probably three or four years old. And I had an experience that I told my mother about the next day, or well, actually, it was a couple weeks later. And uh, I had, I asked her, I told her I want to go back to that place where we went. And she she was going, what place? And I, so I described this place where we had been, where I had been, and uh, she was just baffled. The thing was, after I grew up and started um, realizing I was a little bit different than other people. I started studying quite a bit and I, I now realized that what I, I had done was um, what they call astral travel or astral projection at a very early age. And then uh, again, well, by the time I was about 13, I had a near-death experience and actually crossed into the light and went into the light and then came back. I was in a coma for about three days and my body should have been dead. During this very profound experience, I came out of my body, I could see my body laying in the floor, and then I went into this, I actually didn't go into light, it was like I was the light and the light was with me and there was another consciousness in the light. It was a pretty amazing experience, but it seemed like after that experience when I came back and I was, um, at that point, you know, I was being raised in a Baptist church and uh, very strict Christian church and I knew at that point that something wasn't quite right with uh, what I was being taught after that so I left the church and started um, well it's been a long long journey of I've done the theosophical study I've studied theology um, physics science all types of different philosophies and comparative religion and tried to, to find out what happened uh, when I went all that out of my body on that near-death experience. And uh, I think it did enhance my uh, psychic ability after that experience. I came back and it seemed like I just intuitively knew things other people couldn't tune into. I could see things. I could see beings. Then after I, I started the paranormal research, my family doesn't laugh at me anymore. I can just say that because I uh, set out on a journey to document the things I had been seeing and hearing and experiencing and let other people know that this indeed there's a whole other realms and universes out there that we don't know anything about but some people can tune into these. There's several other sides and what we call uh, the haunting level is also called a bardo region. I call it the bardo region. In Tibetan the, the Tibetan Lamas, ha, that's the word they use for this area, and this is where, uh, let's say a person, their consciousness leaves and they're afraid to go cross on over into the light, because perhaps they haven't been as nice as they should have been. Some of them indeed are pretty evil, and um, so they, they they're usually don't cross into the light and go on because they're of fear or attachment. They may be attached to uh, something about the location they were in. They may be waiting for a loved one. For some reason, they don't go on and they're stuck. And then when they cross into the light, when you go on into the light, there's several different uh, other areas and levels at that point where you can go to. Each, each place is a learning experience, I'll just put it that way. That's why we're all here for is to learn. Our consciousness is tuned into this reality. What we know as this life is our reality or our frequency. So if you imagine like a radio and, and we're tuning it to say 107.7 right now. And But there are many, many, many millions of other frequencies actually going on at the same time. So if we can tune into those frequencies, there'll be a different experience, maybe a different landscape.
uh, just a whole different area. There's also these frequencies that bleed over, like um, in the most of the Bardo regions or the haunting regions are going to be areas that are very close in frequencies to ours, so, there's, so they're kind of bleeding over into our, our frequency or our reality. Electronic voice phenomena, or EVP, is a mysterious event in which human sounding voices from an unknown source are heard on recording tape. The mysterious voices are not heard at the time of the recording. It is only when the tape is played back that the voices can be heard. The recorder I use, my favorite is the it's a little RCA digital audio recorder. It's kind of an older model. It doesn't have downloadable folders, but I like it the best. You're in a room, there's two females. We hear a male voice. That's 100%. You know there was no other male in the room. And there's this voice coming through and that's what I, the voices are what I, I term in my language, I just call it non-local beings. And that what that means is that they're here, but they're not really here in the physical. Monitors are kind of confusing. While you're going through the tapes, you'll start getting these voices and they're almost like giving you little pointers. And they usually come through in a, in a different tone. They have a more monotone quality or robotic sound to their voice. But they're, they're almost always either announcing that someone's coming through, they're, they're organizing. But what they do is they do what I do, but they're on the other side. They're in a different frequency. They were having a lot of paranormal activity at the old Capitol Hill Hospital. Uh, this person had bought the building and they were renovating it and they were having all kinds of experiences. Someone had been pushed off a ladder and another one had been pushed down the stairs. They were seeing apparitions, um, all the classic, you know, paranormal activity they were, they were experiencing. So I called Debbie and, and uh, she said, yeah, come on out and check it out. And that was the first time we went out there and uh, we captured a lot of EVP out of the basement area and uh, some of the floors on that building. Uh, we determined it to be all around haunted for several reasons. We experienced kinetic activity which is where an object moves of its own volition with no recognizable force moving it. I saw an apparition form, full-bodied apparition form, right before we had kinetic activity.